sound of these drums and the sight of this splendid array of elephants tells us that we are in Malabar, nowadays better known as Kerala. We are in fact at Tripunitra, where the annual temple festival has been going on all day. The ancient pageantry is approaching its climax, but later tonight there will be another colourful example of the culture and heritage of this southwest corner of India. Now we hear other drums. It is half past six, and the Katakali musicians are playing a kelikotu, the traditional way of telling the local people that a show is on tonight. A show which will last until sunrise tomorrow. In these fascinating 11 hours, let's try to discover what Katakali is all about. In the green room, the long process of making up is underway, as colourful stones, powders and coconut oil are ground into a fine paste. Here, the elaborate transformation of a human being into an epic character takes place, in a process which lasts two or three hours. Gradually, the actor's individual personality is obliterated, by patterns which indicate the type of character he is to portray. Katakali originated in the ancient ritual plays of Hindu temples and the various dance forms prevalent in Malabar from about the second century. But it was not until the 17th century that it was founded as an individual style of dance drama. Katakali in its present form therefore began at about the time that Shakespeare was writing his plays. In most forms of Asian drama, the actors wear masks. But when a mask is worn, it is impossible to express any emotions of the face. As Katakali is a visual representation of mythological characters, and facial expressions play a very important part, the whole face is painted over. The characters fall into five main categories foremost of which is the noble hero, god or king. His makeup is basically green and called pacha. The face is marked off with the chutti, a ridge of rice paste into which strips of white paper are fixed. This forms a frame within which the actor can express his emotion. <laughs> The makeup artist is highly skilled, and although not usually seen by the public, he is one of the most important members of a Katakali troupe. It is now eight o'clock, and the performance begins with a rhythmic prelude of drumming called the Aranyukeli, played on the mudlam, which is made of jackwood and has ox hide on one end and buffalo hide on the other. The left end is played with the palm, and the right with the fingers, each of which has a finger stall made of rice and lime applied to a strip of cloth. The 55 yards of cloth which make up each costume must be got ready in good time, so that the 15 characters who will be appearing tonight can be dressed one after another without delay. Just before putting on the costume, the actor places a seed inside his eyelids to turn his eyes red. This greatly enhances the expression of the eyes, which plays such an important part in Katakali acting. 
Another category of makeup is called toddy, meaning beard. There are three types of toddy, red, black, and white. The red beards are the evil characters. The black beards, the wild men of the forest. And this is the white beard, Hanuman, the monkey man of divine nature. He has green on his nose to show that he is pious and virtuous. And the animal in him is suggested by these complicated patterns. The gentle characters are called Minuku, a simple golden makeup. Because the acting is so strenuous, female characters are also acted by men. After the Aranyukele, two men come onto the stage and hold up the curtain, the Tirashida. Everything is now ready for the Purupad, which means literally going forth. This is an introduction in pure dance performed by junior actors. <laughs> The costumes of most of the male characters are identical. The most noticeable feature being the enormous skirt, now being applied to the actor who is taking the part of the hero, Bhima. Bells, to emphasize the rhythm of his steps, are tied below the knee. This seemingly cumbersome dress is functional, as the rhythmic sway of the skirt imparts a certain majesty to the movements of the actor and its volume gives the right balance to these oversized figures. The ample space it provides allows for ease of leg movements. And on top of it all, there's a jacket of thick red wool. In contrast, the costume of the female character, like the makeup, is very simple. The Purupad is followed by the Malapadam, a strenuous display of drumming which lasts for more than half an hour. There are two drums, the Madalam, which started the performance, and the Chenda, which we saw at the temple festival. This is also made of jackwood and is covered each end with cowhide. It is peculiar to Malabar and is played with sticks having slightly upturned ends. This is the opportunity for the drummers to demonstrate their skills to the audience. The gilded headgear that completes the costume is called the Caridum. This crown on the superhuman figure of Bhima invests him with majesty. Although made of light wood, it is extremely heavy to wear. As Bhima waits to go onto the stage, he thinks of the days when, as a small boy, he first began learning the art of Katakali. He thinks of the Bharatapura River, one of the holy rivers of India, which cuts across the center of Malabar, on the southern bank of which is the village of Charitaruti, where he lived for eight years. It is typical of all villages in Malabar and is noteworthy only for the presence of the Kerala Kalamandalam, the main center of Katakali training. Students first come to the Kalamandalam at the age of 12 and provided they pass their annual proficiency test, they stay there for eight years. They come from all over Malabar and although originally the art was practiced mainly by the warrior Naya caste, now anyone of any community may join. In the early part of this century, Katakali was a dying art, and it might well have disappeared altogether had it not been for the Malayalam poet, Velator Narana Menon, who established the Kerala Kalamandalam in 1930 to train young actors and keep the art alive. For most of the year, the weather is hot, but in June, the monsoon arrives, and in this cooler climate, 
the really intensive period of training takes place. The lessons begin at three o'clock in the morning with a course of eye exercises in which the movements of the eyes and eyebrows are taught. Clarified butter is applied to the eyes so that all the human emotions can be expressed. To prepare for the exercises to follow, the body is covered with gingerly oil. In the flickering lamplight of the calorie, as the gymnasium is called, various exercises are done under the guidance of an ashan or teacher to ensure that all parts of the body are given the stamina, flexibility and poise that is required of a Katakali actor. This rigorous training is only necessary for those who are going to become actors. But even at this early hour, long before dawn, the drummers can be heard practicing in other calories. The movement of the legs and feet requires special training because the Katakali actor's feet are never flat on the floor. To give him perfect balance, he has to learn to throw his weight onto the outer edges of his feet. A special feature of this early morning training is the Urichel the oral massage, which is done by teachers of the Kalamandlam. The process is painful, but it does create the required flexibility that is demanded by the exacting traditions of the Katakali stage. For half an hour, the teacher massages the students with his feet, working the oil into every joint and muscle. And when the massage is over, shortly after sunrise, the students wash off the oil in the cool waters of the Bharatapura River, which at this time of the year is in full flood. After breakfast, the principal, the teachers and the students go off for the rest of the morning's work. From now until midday, everyone is fully occupied with his training. Rhythm is everything. The rhythm of hands on the Sharana Palaga on which the Madalam is learnt. The rhythm of sticks on bricks as the Chenba students learn their music. and the rhythm of drums and sticks beating time as the actors practice their steps and gestures. For those who are going to become singers, an enormous repertoire has to be written down and committed to memory.
a group of students learn the facial expressions, which demonstrate the nine principal aesthetic emotions. Shringara, which is Malayalam for love. Vera, Vala. Karuna, Pathos. Adbuta, Wanda. Hasya, Derision. Bayanika, Pia. Bibatsa, disgust. Raudra, fury. And Shanta, tranquility. By midday, everyone is hungry. The food is simple, curry and rice, and always the same. After lunch, the students can do what they like. Some just sleep. Some read the vast literature of the Hindu epics, which they will have to perform. Some play games like Karam, which is popular all over Malabar. and some go to the local tea shop. As evening approaches, prayers are sung at the Samadhi, the memorial tablet which marks the place where Velatol, the founder of the Kalamandalam, was cremated. The evening training period includes lessons in the art of makeup, much of which the student applies himself. For by the time his eight years of training are over, he must be capable of acting any character in the Katakali repertoire and applying the makeup which typifies that character. All this training reaches its climax in what is called Charlie Atom which is a major rehearsal for one of the plays, complete in every respect apart from makeup and costume. Two senior students are rehearsing the parts of Bhima and his wife Draupadi in the play Kalyana Sagandika, a story from the Mahabharata. Whilst they are in the forest, a flower drops from the skies. Draupadi picks it up and is so attracted by its fragrance that she asks Bhima to fetch her some more flowers of the same sort. On the right of the stage stand two singers, the leader playing a gong and his assistant a pair of cymbals. They tell the story of the play, verse by verse, in Sanskritized Malayalam. This is interpreted word for word by the actors, interspersed with pure dance. No scenery is required, as the actors describe everything with their hand movements, called mudras, and their facial expressions. No words are spoken though the evil characters emit weird sounds to emphasize their self-importance. By the end of his training, the student is the master of some 600 mudras, a complete language in gesture, which enables him not only to express the lines of the play, but also to converse with other characters on the stage. The drummers, standing on the left of the stage, accompany the action, supply the rhythm, and emphasize the mudras. 